Hello everybody, this is Tim. I just figured, what the fuck, might as well do my review for Child's Play 3 in the same exact night. Just figured, just watch that son of a bitch and throw it out there, might as well do it too in the same night. Finish, to try to finish this series off, so I can upload these videos as quick as possible and move on to another franchise. But yeah, after my review for this film is over, my daughter wanted to be in one of my videos. Because she thinks this this stuff is really fun and she just wants to say hi to everybody out there, you know, who might be watching this video on YouTube. So she'll be there at the ending of this video with her own little video. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to, but it's just something really little cutesy that she wanted to do. But anyway, on to the film. Okay, this is the third in the series of the these films. It's Tile Tiles by 3, duh. Okay, since the second movie. This movie has a time jump from the last one to about, I don't know how many years, Ch but Chucky now. And he's now a teenager, played by a completely different actor, so you don't care about him as much. He's played by Justin Whalen from the shitty-ass Dungeons & Dragons movie, which you probably remember or don't want to. <laughs> but uh, he does an okay job. Nothing amazing. He's alright. I mean, he's decent. But he he does, he likes the charm that Alex Benson had. And plus, because now the character's older, you don't care about him as much. And uh, as for other characters, you got the token nerd. You got the tough girl who has a crush on Andy just because she has a crush on him. There's no reason to it other than the fact that he's the main character. <clears throat> Sorry. And okay, basically the plot of the movie is I forgot. Oh, I forgot to mention the last film that Chucky comes back to life is uh the Playpals company rebuilds him. To try to dispel any negative publicity around the doll, which that kind of bothered me in that film. I thought that was kind of pushing it, and this film was pushing it even more. I'll start. I already tell you that this is the weakest of the three films thus far. It's the worst of the three, but I don't hate it. It's an okay movie, but it's it's definitely the weakest of the three thus far. And I've heard it's uh, the second or the worst of the franchise, but I haven't seen Seed yet. I mean, I've seen it before, but it's been a long time. I remember it sucking pretty bad. But anyway, uh, so basically in this one, Chucky, the Playpals company wants to put the doll back on the market again. And I'm like, what the fuck? There's no way in hell they're going to put this doll back on the market again after all this negative publicity shit that's been going on not once but twice. <laughs> so they put the doll back on the market. Uh, Chucky's corpse is still in the same doll factory for some reason. I don't know why. And this big like crane comes down to hook. And it hooks a hold of his corpse and lifts him over top of this melted melted plastic where they're using it to make the new dolls. His blood drips down into the plastic. There's for some reason his blood like houses his soul or something. I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so his blood drips into the pl melted plastic. He comes back to life in this new doll. The owner of the company... Uh, of Play Pals, I don't know the guy's name, takes him to his home because I guess people who own toy companies like to collect toys, I guess. <laughs> it's not just about the money. <laughs> they care about the art too. And anyway, he has him in his home. We get some shitty suspense shots because it's the third movie in. We already know the doll's alive. Uh, you can't creep us out with the doll running around and all that stupid shit again. Well, it's not stupid shit, but it just doesn't work because we've had it twice already for two two-hour movies or I like two-hour movies you can't pull the same shit again so we get a pretty decent death scene with him with the owner of the company Chucky strangles the fuck out of him with a yo-yo it's pretty it's pretty decent I mean he is the Lakeshore Strangler it's about time he strangled somebody <laughs> uh, as far as the death scenes in the movie go they're all right we don't get anything artistic like the the fuck out of the teacher in the last one with the ruler and how the camera zooms away from the violence. We don't get anything like this. Well, that kind of flavor in this one, but they're decent. The asshole guy in the film, Colonel Shelton at the military academy, gets the fuck blood out of him by live rounds. That Chucky's took paintball bullets out of these guns and switched them with real bullets, and he gets the shit blood out of him by the real bullets. So that's a pretty neat death scene, especially for the asshole. I mean, you're just glad to see him go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Back to the plot of the movie. Uh, basically, uh, Chucky wants Andy again for the third time. Uh, so that's kind of stale too. He's hunting after the same guy again. Uh, Andy's at a military academy, which I'm not sure how that works in real life. It states done moving you from foster homes. It just says, fuck it, sends you to a military academy. I guess. <laughs> so Chucky mails himself to the academy. And he's 
this little uh, boy named Tyler who's friends with Andy finds him while he sees the package ripped and uh, he decides to take him back with him and see what he looks like or check him out and play with him because kids in these movies just love good guy dolls. I don't know why. I think they're pretty fucking creepy. But <laughs> kids in these films seem to love them. But anyway, so the doll jumps out at him and I thought this was kind of stupid. The kid just reacts like, oh cool, talking doll, and I'd probably shit my pants. But anyway, so uh, Tyler, the new little boy in this one, or the younger, well, the kid that Chucky decides to go after in this one, he changes his mind and thinks, well, I got a new body, why don't I just go after him? And we're all thinking, well, duh, why the fuck didn't you do that in the first place? You could just found some random kid on the side of the street. Or I go through the big elaborate plan of mailing yourself all the way here and then realizing it. I, I just don't think he's that stupid, but anyway. As far as lines go in this film, Chucky, he's always had a morbid sense of humor. He has some funny lines in here, like don't fuck with the Chuck when he knocks the shit out of the uh, owner of Play Pals with a golf club. Knocks him back like look like five foot. But it was pretty entertaining. He says don't fuck with the Chuck. <laughs> That's a pretty hilarious line. But then you get really silly Looney Tunes type line where he like, some these two chicks put lipstick on him and leave and he gets up and wipes it off and says this means war which might be a fucking Bugs Bunny <laughs> but it's okay and uh, so basically Chucky's at the military academy he which I thought was a weird setting for this film for a Chucky film the last fucking place I expected to be set was a military academy I think it kind of clashes with it a little bit and not in a good way <laughs> but anyway so Chucky's at the military academy uh, Andy tries to, he, he goes after Andy to, for some reason, to try to kill him, I guess, so he won't get in the way, but at the same time, you're like, well, you're fucking sh telling him, warning him that you know it, letting him know that you're there, so, <laughs> you're kind of a dumbass in this one, Chucky, but anyway, so, uh, Andy tries to help Tyler, you don't feel as much sympathy for this kid, Tyler, as you did Andy, he's not as cute, and he's just more annoying, because uh, he Andy tries to tell him uh, exactly what is that, that Chucky's a dick basically, and uh, Andy I mean Tyler just kind of blows him off so you're like well fuck this kid, but anyway, so uh, 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 you get some other other death scenes in the film. I mean well other some cool stuff in the film is Andy kind of like flips out whenever he sees Chucky around because he's traumatized still because he, from the incidents he had when he was a kid. Which, that's pretty neat. I like that characteristic they threw in there. That's adds to the character pretty well. And Justin Whalen, he's okay. And his uh, girlfriend in the movie, basically his girlfriend, is this girl called, this character called the Silva. And she, the actress who plays her, does fine. And his nerd friend is called Whitehurst, I think. He's just a token nerd. There's nothing really amazing about him. You've seen one nerd, you've seen them all. But, <laughs> anyway. So, basically, um... There's the guy at the military academy named Colonel Shelton. He's a dick to Andy just to be a dick. I mean, this kid has had a really hard life from foster homes and everything, and he goes to a military academy, and everybody's just both dicks to him. It's, this movie's like the most cliche out of the three. It's the biggest cliche of them all. I mean, you got the new kid. Everybody's a dick to him. You got the nerd. You got the token. I mean, you got the tough girl who just likes the main character because he's the main character. And that's it's basically a big cliche this movie is. I want to say I still think this movie's decent because it has some okay death scenes as far as characters go. Andrew Robinson is in it from Hellraiser and he plays like this weird barber who loves to cut hair. And there's a really fucking goofy scene in the movie where he tries to cut the doll's hair and I don't know why but it's entertaining at least because Chucky picks up like a straight razor from the chair and slits his throat. It says presto you're dead. But yeah like I said you get some pretty neat death scenes and some creative lines in this, in this film too. And uh well. The, for the rest of the story, uh, they have these annual war games where it's like paintball games. And so Andy's at the, uh, in, he's on his the blue team and Tyler's on the red team. And so he goes and sneaks to the red team's camp to try to find Tyler. And Tyler is well, AWOL with Charles, well, Chucky, walking through the woods. <laughs> and uh, Chucky wants to uh, obviously find a place where he can get him alone and possess him. Tyler gets away. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, there's a death scene in the movie that's a little weak, but this is an uh, older army guy. He like, has a heart attack when he sees Chucky. Uh, it's probably normal that that would happen in real life, but still it's a little eh, weak. Uh, other death scene I actually kind of liked was uh, 
and he kills the garbage man. Chucky gets thrown in the back of this fucking garbage truck uh, by that same military guy who has the heart attack later. And um, um, Chucky starts hollering. The guy thinks, well, somebody needs help. He goes back there. Chucky gets out, cranks that some bitch on, and uh, crushes him in the back of the garbage truck. So it's not gruesome or gory, but it's entertaining. and it's got a little suspense to it. I like that one. Uh, and as far as everything else goes, okay, well, yeah, back to the story that I was talking about. Uh, so Tyler gets away, uh, but then Chucky kidnaps the Silva, Andy's girlfriend, not supposed to be his girlfriend. Um, he's got her hostage with a big fucking grenade, which is kind of funny seeing this little doll with a huge ass fucking grenade in his hand that looks almost bigger than him. Um, so, uh, he demands the trade. He wants Tyler to be traded for De Silva. And they make the trade. He throws the grenade, and the nerd, like, fucking leaps on it and explodes, which is a pretty epic death scene for the nerd character, but it, I liked it. I mean, it was all, it was fine, but more epic than I expected this guy to go out. But anyway, and, uh, another thing I thought was weird was, like, a carnival, or a fair, I believe. Like, no carnival, right next to this, um, this fucking military academy. Which is kind of stupid. This movie feels really rushed. Like it was just written really quick. Like I said, write this motherfucker really quick. <laughs> and I've heard it only came out like a year after the last movie. So I can kind of tell that this script was written really fast. So uh, Chucky takes Tyler to the uh, carnival. And uh, at this carnival, uh, Andy and Silva follow him there. Silva gets shot. We get her out of the picture because we don't really give a fuck about her. I mean, the actress does fine, but... I mean, we only give we really only give a shit about Andy, so get her the fuck out of the movie. But anyway, so and then they go to this uh, like ride or something like that, where it's like got a real Reaper Sith that slings down and slices off half of Chucky's face, and you're like, oh shit, fucking blade on this thing is real, <laughs> is real, and you know you uh, that just blows me away right there because I'm like, what the fuck, I actually have a real blade on the end of this thing. <laughs> I mean, you can just tell this movie was written so quick. I guess they were trying to top the final of the last movie, the the Toy Factory, or whatever, Good Guy Factory, and it just comes off a little stupid in this one, and plus they got this giant fucking fan blade at the bottom of this, like, styrofoam skulls, but it's probably real skulls, knowing how authentic this place likes to be, <laughs> and this fucking Tucky falls into it at the end of it, and gets sliced into a million pieces, and that's how the character goes out, which is a pretty cool death for this film, and one of the things it's got going for it, but anyway, then, uh, so he gets half his face sliced off in that carnival ride. Andy chases after him. Silva's out of the picture. She got shot in the leg. Um, he takes him to the top of the. You know, Tyler goes to the top of those styrofoam skulls or real skulls, whatever you want to believe. <laughs> and this little fucking dragon like knocks Tyler out in like a really weak way. It's like a pussy hit, but it still knocks him out. I don't know how. And so Chucky jumps up and tries to finish his chant, switch souls. This fucking chant takes forever. I don't see how he could ever switch fucking bodies with anybody with this chant. Because it's long as hell. But anyway. So Andy's aiming his gun and he manages to shoot off Chucky's arm. His left arm I think. And uh, he blows him backwards. And then Andy gets up there. Chucky jumps on his back. He Tyler reaches him a pocket knife. Because Tyler's like hanging down the other side. And he reaches him a pocket knife. He slices off Chucky's other his right hand. And fucking grabs him and slings that little son bitch into the fan. <laughs> And you get like an up close shot with like half of Chucky, where the like Chucky's face, you know, where the half of it's missing. He's falling into the fan in slow motion. It's pretty epic for this film. This film has one thing going for it: it's an epic ending for the Chucky character in this one. I mean, he doesn't get sliced up as much like Terminator style and stuff like he did in the first two, which disappointed me. But his main death at the end with the fan blade is pretty fucking epic. The fact that they actually have a real fan blade here at this place is pretty stupid, but his death scene is still pretty epic and cool. And uh, so. He gets sliced all the shit. After that, Andy and Tyler leave. They take the police show up to take Andy for questioning, I guess, because they think he has something to do with these murders again. <laughs> so it's kind of a downer type ending for the character, because as far as I know, this is the last time we see him out of the movies thus far. So you're like, uh. So all in all, I would say that this is probably two and a half star film out of a possible four. It's not the worst of these films that would go to the honor goes to seed, but it's probably the second worst, honestly, of these movies. Not a great movie, it's not a bad movie, it's just an 
okay movie. Kind of need you can watch and go, eh, well, it's over. <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's an, only an okay cap off to the Andy trilogy of the first three films. I guess you could call it the Andy trilogy. I mean, he's in all three of these fuckers. <laughs> For him, he's the hero of all three. So, but anyway, acting wise, the girl who plays De Silva does fine. She does a good job with her character, even though it's not written to anything amazing. Justin Whalen does fine as uh, Andy. He's okay. I mean, uh, he's just you can't root for him as much because it's not the same actor, and he's not the young boy, so he's, he doesn't seem like he's in as much jeopardy. And uh, the guy who plays the asshole, Colonel Shelton, he does good. He seemed like an asshole. I believe he was an asshole. He was an asshole. And uh, so, as far as this goes, yes, this is two and a half star film. It's decent, but that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys. Oh yeah, and last but not least on the acting, Brad Dourif is fine again, and the doll has kind of a more demonic look in this film, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, oh, and the opening credits, I like too because the way it's got like got blood mixed in with the plastic, it's like swirling around with this creepy little score. I like the score better in this one than I did the second one. Uh, just because I like the darker atmosphere of this one uh, compared to the second one, which is more like a lot colors and everything around, like look wise. But uh, I, I like the score in this one better than I did the second one. But anyway, this film is like I said decent, but that's as, that's as far as it goes. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you again with Bride of Chucky. Peace out. Everybody. Hello, everybody. This is Tim with my special guest star here, Serenity Sizemore. Say hi, Serenity. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Say, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? You cock me. Say, tickle, 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 <laughs> Say Yippee Yippee <laughs> Oh Say Nice meeting you everybody <laughs> Say Peace out Peace out <laughs>